Hey, everyone. OK. Hello, everyone. So my name is Linda, and I'm really excited to be here and let you guys know about my writing process. So I've learned a lot, and I'm more than willing to share with everyone. But before I get started, let me tell you a bit about myself. So most of I already spilled some of the beans, but I'm a front-end developer, and I also write as articles, like that's why I'm here. And I mentor and coding coach, and during the weekends, I am a co-organizer of the Regis Meetup Nigeria. So you might have heard about it. If you haven't, you can check us on Twitter. We have meetups every month, and we talk about Vue.js, which is an awesome front-end framework. So we can start. The tips I'm going to share, because I'm a software developer, most of my examples will relate to front-end engineers and software engineers. But I'm very sure that the tips I'm going to, to share can work for anybody that wants to write consistently. So here are some of the things, questions, and things we're going to cover. First, what really is technical content? I, I think like this is um this is um best part of talk because I want to redefine what you see technical content as because it really does like the first step to unlocking this. Next, we'll also talk about how to find your next post, how to share your content, and also just tips and resources that I use to write. So what is technical content? Um, so I just have like 30 minutes, so I can't be quick, but I did, I would have loved to hear back from people, but I guess during the question session, we can discuss a bit more. But what exactly is technical content? To create technical content, you must first know what content is. And I define content as a solved problem. Content is a solved problem, no matter how small, no matter how big. At the end, at the core, what users are looking for is a solved problem. And you can even look into like social media and things that trend, right? You can have things like if a, a nice hack on how to cut your garlic, like peeling garlic is very annoying. And then someone can just create a video on how to efficiently peel garlic and then it goes viral. And that's like just social media. And then when you come into technical, when you think technical, okay, programming, things that have to do with software and all of that, and like your role as a job, there are small things that you do every day to improve your work life. Like for example, um, I remember on Twitter, I saw someone, um, sorry, there's a, okay. I remember on Twitter, I saw someone post something on how to make snippets. And that was just something the person posted. It's, and I use that on my VS code every day. Like right now, I don't write console.log fully. I just write log. I just use that shortcut every time. And so when you redefine what you see content as and just see it as a soft problem, it widens the range of things you can write about. Because at first, like when I started writing, I thought that I, my article has to be a holistic thing, like how to create an e-commerce website using Vue, how to, you know, set up user authentication using Auth0 or something like that. And, we def and those articles can kind of be big and bulky and, be t and kind of tedious to write. But when you realize that, it's actually just so problems it can be it can be simply you facing um you facing a bug at work and you figure out how to solve the bug and then just writing an article about it that's it can just be as simple as that and then and then it could be anything like maybe you needed to convert um some image format and then you found this really nice tool that does that you can get to know more about the tool and write about okay, how you can use this tool to convert images from this format in a way that is simple for just developers. Because with everything, like there's always there are people that just want the simplest form of a solution. So even though you have like image editing softwares that can 
do whatever to an image. There's some people that just want to change the format and there are tools out there. So things that appeal to you would probably appeal to other people and you can just write about it. So now that you understand what technical content is, that it is a solved problem, now you, we can move on to, okay, finding solved problems. So the first thing, of course, like I was mentioning was with your day-to-day -day life, when you're, when you're working, things that you do that make your work more efficient, box that you fix, and all of that, tools that you use, you can write a bit that you're curious about, but then sometimes you're not motivated enough. You just can't think of anything to write about, and it happens to everybody, and they call it writer's block. But I think for developers, we have an advantage because developers are very eager to share their problems. <laughs> Immediately, this bug is not working or something is not working. They'll post it on Stack Overflow, they'll post it on, under the GitHub issues and all of that. So developers are willing to share their problems. That means that you have content lying all around you. So where can we find content? From Googling. So every question, everything that you Google, is content, if you search, oh, how to do this, the fact that you didn't know it is a problem and you're seeking that problem on the internet by Googling, that is content. And the thing with writing is you don't have to say, oh, this content already exists, so I can't make it. No, we need a lot of content. More content is always good. So when, and when you write, you write from your own perspective. And that's one thing I do, like when I'm explaining things in my blogs, I'm not trying to just write as I think I should write. I just explain how I understand the problem because I know that out there, there are other people like me that also had issues with it. And sometimes like you cannot try to understand every single concept that exists. And sometimes you like when you're working and they've given you a feature, you just want to figure out how to do this particular thing. You don't care about the first principles of that. You just want to know how to do that thing. And that's where I write my blogs, like, okay, how to set up pagination using grid sum. Like I just assume, okay, if you're Googling this, you've already built the grid sum website and you just want to insert pagination. And on my blog, you just get that immediately. So anything you Google, is content, inspiration from others. When, as for me, I follow a lot of developers online and I kind of like tailored my social media feed and to, to give me the content that I want. So I follow developers and that, that are active on social media and post about topics that I'm interested in. So when you see other people posting about topics and all of that, you can take a book a page from their book. And when you write about it, you can also like tag them. You can say, oh, this was inspired by this person. It's great. You're also sharing and plug, plugging in the person's work. So nobody's going to say, oh, why are you writing this article that I wrote about before? You can say, if someone wrote about, let's say, how to add social media links to a website using React, in my own case, I can say, oh, I am um, how to write social media add social media links to a website using Vue. And then I can also tag and say, if you want to do this with React instead, you can check out this, my best developer friend here. You know, that's a cool thing and everybody's. So I think that kind of covers social media and then also Stack Overflow questions. Like Stack Overflow questions are a, like, it's a gold mine. Whenever you, some, you come across questions, when it has, when they have a lot of upvotes, that means that a lot of people had that problem and were seeking, actively seeking the solution. And that is also a, a good way to say, oh, if a lot of people are, are looking for this solution, I'm going to write about it. And the thing with Stack Overflow questions is sometimes they tend to be out of context because it's just like, you just have to write the answer. Maybe they tend to be really brief and you don't really fu fully understand things. That's why there are a lot of memes of people just copying a block of code from Stack Overflow and putting it in somewhere. But you have to understand what that block of code does, right? And that's where you come in. If people are trying to find a particular solution, instead of them just randomly copying a block of code that they don't understand, you can write a post about that, explaining what that block of code does and like explaining, let's say, the problem 
what causes it, how to solve it, and more resources to fully understand it if they want to go deeper. And next is also like GitHub issues. This is similar to Stack Overflow questions on the GitHub issues when you see that, okay, there's a bug with something. And if it was like, let's say, finally solved, how it was solved, you can also use that as a reference to write your blog post and say, oh, if you're having issues with this, uh, it has been solved and this is the way to do it. This is why it happened. And why I'm suggesting this is because when you when people Google for problems, the way um, Google's algorithm is set is it prefers to um, it prefers to show or refer full blown articles about a topic instead of just a random stack over overflow um, answer. If there is an article that fully answers that question, it tends to prefer that. And then also just curiosity, anything that you're curious about, you can also write about because sometimes I use writing as an avenue to learn. So if I know that, okay, I want to write about it, I'll be forced to understand how this thing actually works and what it does. So whenever I'm curious about something that I don't fully understand the concept yet, I can use the opportunity to learn and also get an article out of the process of learning, which is a win-win. So now that you've um, found articles, you've, you've found content, you know what content is great. You're now able to find content. How are you going to use all of that content? You have to be consistent. And here I'm saying that, okay, the act of behaving or happening in a similar way over time is what consistency means. Consistency is very, very important. And I know that it is hammered a lot of times, but it's not something that is easy to do. That's the, that's the truth. Con being consistent is not easy, but being consistent will take you far. And I think I have, um, I've, I've, I've spoken about consistency in, in one of my other talks about in getting started with programming, but I'll just give you a brief, a brief, the, the highlight of it. Basically, you have to have developed a habit to be consistent. And for you to be consistent with a habit, it has to be fun. It has to be interesting. If, if, a, if a habit is not appealing, if writing is not appealing to you, you're not going to do it. So you have to, you have to first of all, like define what writing is to you and like, and then do it. You can't just say, oh, every article I have, I write has to be um, 2,000 words. And then say, I'm going to write 2,000 words every week. Then if you also have a full-time job, that can become really hard to do. And you won't look forward to doing it. And if you don't look forward to doing something, you're not going to do it. So when I mean being consistent is you have to make it a way of life. You have to um, you have to make do it in such a way that it fits in with your present routine or with some of your current habits. So, but you don't want to make it like too easy also. So there's just that sweet spot. And that's why I have this text here saying like, okay, have a routine. You can say, I'll publish an article every X weeks, depending on how busy you are and and how, um, how much time you have on your hands, you can set to do it every, every week or every two weeks or even once a month, but as long as you're consistent. I think a sweet, spot is, a sweet spot is every two weeks, in my opinion. Okay, now we, we have our content and we've written about it. How do we share the content? First off, on social media, like that's the, that's the first place that you would share your content because when you create something, be it a business, people tend to associate a business with the person. People tend to associate the article with the writer. So somebody is more likely to retweet your article just because they know you, not because of how great the article is. And trust me, like when you start writing at first, you're going to write articles that aren't so good. You're going to write articles that, that um, aren't so user friendly at first, but you're going to get feedback from people and you're going to, you're going to make mistakes and people are going to correct you online. But you, if you want to be good at anything, you have to 
first be ready to be bad at it. So share your content on social media, share it on WhatsApp, on Twitter. I really love Twitter for sharing things. And any of those other platforms where you are active on, you can share your content. LinkedIn is also cool. If you want to build up that whole career um, brand thingy, you can also share your articles on LinkedIn. But I really also love cross-posting. So on platforms like Dev2 and Hashnode, those are my two favorites when it comes to posting developer-friendly content. But if you're not a developer and you're not going to be like adding code snippets to your articles, then I guess Medium is fine. But I don't think Medium is very developer-friendly because the code snippets, it's not... The, the texts aren't colorful. You can't really indent properly. They need to improve that. But I really loved um, posting up Dev2. Dev2 is my favorite. That's where I presently post because they really have a great community. They also repost your articles on their on their on their social media platform, like on their Twitter account that has over one hundred and forty thousand followers. So if you post something that is related to like JavaScript or any of their um, custom tags and it's doing a bit well and speaking up, they're going to repost it for you and that would really help. Recently, I had an article that had over 15, that presently has over 15,000 views and most of my views was gotten through Dev2. And I also like put back links to my blog, which is lindaojo.com and that was really cool for me. So Dev2, and any other thing you can think of that I haven't mentioned, I'll ask you guys at the end. Okay, now tips and resources. I really love Notion, like I'm a big Notion girl. Like if, ain't, if I can put anything in Notion, I'll put it there. So document writing inspirations in an orderly fashion. I recommend using Notions. So remember when I was saying that, okay, we can check on Stack Overflow when you're curious, um, GitHub issues on social media. When you're having those bursts of inspiration, it's not as if immediately you have the inspiration, you're going to write the article, you're going to post it. That's not how it works. You'll probably just be scrolling on your timeline when you see the post from your colleague or you're actively working when you Google something. And so you won't just write the article down, but you can't expect yourself to remember everything. So you should document it. I always document my articles, the ideas that I have. And some in other pages, like you can even take it a step further. You can um, you can add tags to it, like Notion lets you add tags. So you can add tags to it based on their topics, be it is JavaScript, be it Vue.js. And you can also add tags on the severity, right? Like how how complex do you think this article is going to be? You know, how complex do you think this article is going to be? How simple do you think this article is going to be? That can help because I remember when I was right, I wrote consistently every week for about five to six months. And I remember there are some weeks that at work, I had to push this feature and things, I had a lot of things going on. And it's not as if I only work and write articles, I have like, but the fact that I also had a page where I separated them according to the severity, how how tax and how taxing I thought they would be. On, the, on weeks where I couldn't do much, I'll just pick one of the simple articles, like let's say explaining the this keyword, you know, or just JavaScript array methods or something like that, something that I felt was lightweight. And then on weekends where I had more time, I could take up like a bigger, um, a bigger article like okay how to start your programming um journey because i know i'll have to like do some research on some resources to get a lot of data but something like just javascript array just being on mozilla you just that that is already enough you can get enough content to refresh yourself and just write that article and then i have a bit more tips so a cool thing you could do is also having a writing partner that will just be accountable. You can also celebrate small wins. So like I remember the first time when the um, dev to the practical dev posted an article that I wrote, I was really like, I was really happy because it meant, okay, ooh, distraction is getting popular, you know? And also you should have fun. You should write about things that you enjoy, things that you're curious about, like 
if it's how to make text bounce on a page, you can write about it. Like don't, at the end, you're the one that defines your constraints and all of that. So don't restrict yourself and say, oh, I only have to write about how to set up cloud functions and all of that. Oh, this is my brand. No, just be authentic, be you. Write about things that you are curious, of, curious about, things that you enjoy, things that you might want to challenge yourself with. But at the end, make sure that you're having fun writing or else you want to do it all the time. And then don't compare yourself with others. Like, I think this is a rule that applies across all fields. There is comparison is the tip of joy. There's no way comparing yourself with others and saying, oh, this person's article is doing this much, or this person's article it was posted on that. Like, do it for yourself. You're, you're in a competition with just yourself. You're just competing with your previous self. Don't try to outdo someone else. No, it's not worth it. And then always um, handle feedback and criticism well. So as I was saying earlier that when you post, there are going to be people, there are people on, like nerds on the internet that are going to tell, oh no, hey, 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 this is the old version, you're not, um, they have updated this and all of that. And that's fine, just take the criticism well, make changes where suggested and all of that, but don't, there's no point arguing on the internet. So just take criticism and feedback well through that you can even create connections with people in the future. And I think this, this thing came with me. The camera when I was designing, it says that the mind is just like the muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets and the more it can expand. The more you write, the easier it's going to be to write. The more when you like, when I started writing, I kind of like had, I really, you kind of like to develop your own style. I really love like when I have an introduction, some sort of joke in the introduction, and then I would have like I really like when I have points when I can say, okay, A do this, B do this, C do this, and then I have a conclusion. I also like having code snippets where possible. But I'm just saying that the more you write, the more comfortable you're going to be writing, the more you figure out your style and what you enjoy doing, the easier it's going to get. And it's going to get easier, not because writing itself is easier, but because you've gotten better. And that's pretty much it for what I have to say about writing. If you, if you want to connect with me, you can reach out to me on Twitter, on the audio underscore. So that's my handle on Twitter. But I guess that's pretty much it. We can move on to the questions section. Hello, Linda. Hello, Linda. Hello, Linda. Wait. Hello, Linda. Thank you very much for, for the session today. It's been amazing. Um, um, you really delivered a nice topic there. I learned a lot from what you have said. Thank you very much, right? Um, so um, in while you were talking, you, you, you listed